No, man. Go, go get him again. What on earth again. was that? Did he kick? Dude, was it the shoes? Did he kick a wire again? It's the shoe again? again. It's the big foot he's got, dude. He's kicking out wires left, right, and center. I don't know, man. Like, but he did you guys switched. hear the beat? He was like dancing around. Anyways, yeah. it's crazy. I so I gave Joel some shit earlier because he. I don't know if you guys heard this, but I sent him to the store to get food for Bergie. Yeah. I, I said get some baklava, and instead he came back back with a bunch of fucking balaclavas. Yeah, and like he went. It's like he's just fucking up all over the place. He kicked out. I'm gonna talk to his dad, man. I don't know, man. That's kind of weak. Um, I do think it's weird that it's a different. Like last week, his it was his left shoe that was big, and this week it's his right shoe that's big. Like what? Never even noticed that. What's the point? Like, is it really for a condition, or is it just? That's one of the shoes is thing. one of the shoes is Pritchard's, and he said he he hurt his leg while he was out on that skiing trip with his stepdad. Yeah. I don't know. Well, Sorry, everybody, about that. We're back. Uh, thank you for hanging tight. Uh, special shout out to my homie Longhair for tuning in. We got Hand Solo Records in the place. We got Mean Joe Tunes. We got Chokeleys. Man, so we do okay because I'm actually I don't see the uh, chat at all, but it's working. I think so. Same Use the balaclavas to, to go <laughs> to get the baklava. Yeah, exactly. Exactly, Choke. Oh, yeah, Growing Up Mike's on here. Yeah, you're oh, on time, okay. man. Okay, everybody Joel, good. Joel, Joel kind of banged up the show again. But, uh, and uh, Bergy. Let, let, Can let, we check in bring, on him and see if he's let's okay? Let's bring him in. Let's bring him in. Joel, like, Col Joel crashed right into him. Bergy. I know he's What on earth are you looking at? What could that be? Well... You know, I'm I'm looking at this cassette that we're we're doing this over because you couldn't you guys couldn't hear me before. Uh, this yeah. is uh, this is this old tape that I got a million years ago in Halifax. I mean, thesis. You, you tell them you tell them what it is. My guess is and still is was and still is that that's the Sentinels original but homemade cover. It is indeed, my friend. And who is the Sentinels, Sentinels. out there for our listeners? It was uh, Jesse Dangerously, a.k.a. Maxfield Stanton, correct? Jesse? Yes. Ginsu, of course. Somebody in the chat has to say where Maxfield Stanton comes from. No cheaters, but somebody say, if, if anybody knows, I want it. It's my little pony, right? <laughs> Not even. <laughs> Jam and the holograms. Close. Good call. Sailor Moon. Oh, am I allowed? Yeah. I know this. That's cool. I'm sorry. I, I spoiled it. It's, it's all right? cool. All cool Bro. cartoons. Gem is probably my favorite of those three, for real. Uh, but yeah, Jesse and then Ginsu and uh, Naked J, right? Mm -hmm. Who was AKA Savage Poetic. I, I love that he was either Naked J or Savage Poetic. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He said that like Gabby J from, uh, from Super Punch Out. Naked J! <laughs> Yay! Naked Jay. And every time I met him, he was fully clothed. So Yo, you never went to those Dartmouth parties. He was notorious. I'm going to tell this. He was notorious for walking up to somebody who didn't know him well enough at the party and go, going, you want to see the funniest thing? <laughs> then when they it's, when they said yes, which they tended to because he's, he's a joker, uh, he'd just wait for them to look down and see that he had his dick out. <laughs> Like actually, like <laughs> actually, his his genuine human penis was who, who, to him the funniest thing. It sounds like you, your old rap group was exactly like my old rap group, <laughs> and it Which, sounds like it's exactly like the tool shed. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so funny. But and Jesse, I gotta give you shout outs for the photocopy for those in the chat. I know we got a lot of homies in the chat who totally get it but this photocopied expertly folded handwritten liner notes with art who did the artwork it's all ginsu. ginsu all of the artwork and hand lettering and spelling choices are ginsu and, and the um, shout outs which can i read them again since we yeah, couldn't please, read please do because this is like a highlighted thing and that was like as definitely like i remember when we were putting out our tapes as kids the shout out section was what like the most fun to write out so you oh, yeah. shout out DJ Moves, Looney Tunes, Sebi Tones, Kunga 219, 62, and the fellas at triplebypass.com to Chi Chi No Self, DJ Critical, Michael Red. 
Uh, I just I don't know why there's no SJ in there, but that's cool. Because <laughs> uh, it was they're very aspirational shout outs. They're very like <laughs> that is way less like our homies and peers than people we hoped would know. Yeah, there it is. Well, yeah, I know. The, the, the design of the label is done by Reg at uh, Put It On CD in uh, Cole Harbor. Oh, wow. Well, we Reg shared, so in my pile nice. of tapes, this I think is... that's where I got my... Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Oh. Oh, no. So that's one of my tapes, which was 99. So I don't know when Sentinels came out. So that's the Dregs. This is a Dregs tape. We didn't even have artwork at the time. This was photocopied. Hmm. I use some kind of font. It looks like, uh, <laughs> but so you had the fancy, like actual manufactured tapes. I had the TDK SA <laughs> sixties, which Yo, I but that's, personally that's high stayed bias. up. Yeah, I have a high bias, and I stayed <laughs> up late dubbing all of these. But I just want to show you <laughs> how we were on the same page. Check it out. Fold out. Oh yeah, well. the fold out so photocopy style. And if I can do one more thing for this. I just want to quickly say about the photocopies. Um, my parents would occasionally do work for Sean's father. Uh, my parents had a home office with a photocopier, which is where I made the photocopies for the uh, 50 copies of the Sentinels tape that ever existed. And um, some of them, they, they're like duotone because it you, there was a switch where you could make them be blue photocopies if you were photocopying like blueprints and plans or black photocopy, so I would switch between the ink, between the toner, nice. while they were going. To, but where was the photocopier that you used? I I made these at Kinko's with those oh, okay. red cards that used to plug in. And uh, and I know where we got our inspiration from. Yes. We'll run Haltown live. I thought this was a show and tell show, so I'm, I wanted a... to bring stuff to show and tell you about. You've done both so well. <laughs> what are the what are the Joe Run shoutouts say? Oh, actually, that's a good question. Does he even have? I don't even think he has shoutouts. It's he actually went the next level though and taped the inside. It's like a taped on thing. Right, because he didn't want to. Crazy small shoutouts here. Um, oh, look at that, SJ! Big shoutouts to you for coming out. So he knew what was up. <laughs> but <laughs> on. Uh... On Inter Alia, uh, book two contacted me. He must have called me because nobody was texting those days. Um, certainly he wasn't. I think he called me to say, like, you know, you shouted out Thesis Sahib three times. Shout out list. <laughs> <laughs> and we he were... didn't mention me at all. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Hey, we were so, we were hanging out. Hey, hey, who who gave you a painting? All right, which which one? Me or Tim? That's true. <laughs> Timmy, Timmy never gave me a painting, no matter how many times I asked. Should we should we dig into the origin of SJ? Wait, let's, what do you got there? Another tape? I got more tapes. I'm sorry, I just yo five. You may have heard of weirdo magnet. The two oh, double tape. Oh, I don't have the thesis Sahib tape though. I was about but to I say, got... I think I got my tape made at the same place as you guys in Halifax, too. Of course you did. Yeah. Well, you yeah. didn't get Bernie These to dub it like... late at night. Yeah, you weren't on my double cassette deck from Radio Shack. Yeah. I press play, y'all. I press pause, y'all. I press stop <laughs> and then rewind. <laughs> and when you find a loop, then you do it again. Record the same thing every time. <laughs> 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 that's so dope, man. Is this the hook of some unreleased uh, burglar material, or is it from Yeah, that's else? on a new jam. Uh, yeah. A new jam for the new record, actually. It's about oh, that's here first, nerds. So I'm, in, I'm in that tape mind, tapes uh, state of mind. But yeah, this I want to show you this, Jeff, because look at that. Thinking Sneaker. rich. What we do in the, the COVID bubble. It's like, I got, I'm here <laughs> in my lair. I just want to share. Uh, the stinking rich that I dubbed uh, when I was like helping someone do a fill in show on CKDU, and I dubbed tape to tape at CKDU onto yeah. this. And, you know, the Rich album, this was, I got, uh, one side is Game Tight and one side is Chin Music. Amazing. Oh, dope. Dope. Off the uh, CKDU property. So. Uh, dope, dope, Anyways, dope, 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 these, dope. these are all old, old legends. So Chin Music is like, um, 
It's like the same song, same songs on both sides, right? It's uh, one of the first No Records releases. Got that mm -hmm. ridiculous goatee he used to have, but it's like photoshopped to be extra long. You know, it's yeah, like 1992, so. That's right. Yeah, track listing intro, All About Me, Can't Be Seen, Daisy, Killin' MC. Oh, and then I've got Sebutones on here, so it ends at Killin' kill yeah. MC. Killin' MC. Is how he spelled? The, yeah, because it was the same. It was only like four tracks. They were the same on both sides. Daisy. Mm -hmm. I remember back in the days, baby, but there were no ifs, ands, buts, and no maybes. Yo, wait. I ought to take that butt pat part back because you would have your butt stack up the next man's butt crack. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. But then whoever guesses, thinks, or dreams, he knows. Oh, wait. Killing MC was hard. I remember that about... It was like the... the boom, do -dum, boom, do -dum, do -dum. And all the other ones were like kind of like party time, except when there was like a diss to Helltown Projects. It's a yeah. big Jimi Hendrix sample. Uh, wow. It's uh, it's not my story to tell per se, but I did not too long ago hang out with Fox 65 and uh, I was helping him. Peter Project and I were helping him uh, with some dat tape stuff. And I got to hear some really old, amazing jams from that time and wow. stuff that never came out and like different mixes. And uh, I would love him to, to explain because there's some really cool, some cool stuff that never happened when he was working with uh, Sloan's label. And there was like that whole Halifax thing. I think I was talking, yeah. I was, I did a Sloan podcast not too long ago, uh, which is really a good podcast um, call about Sloan, if you like Sloan, Halifax stuff. Anyways, oh. Rich was briefly uh, on their label back in the day. Murder and Records. Murder mm. Records. Right. And he had yeah. some dat tapes and of all this stuff. And so the good news is, yeah, Peter and I found a guy, it was actually through Peter Project, found a, a guy who had like a professional dat um, tape player. And we transferred them to digital and hopefully some of it may see the light of day but if you see him ask him about it because uh some <laughs> cool stuff there anyways tangents yeah. right? we're podcasting that's no, what that's we're dope. about we're tangential we co-sign <clears throat> tangent and sign heck yeah heck yeah hey we want to try this thing it's new uh you're our you're our beta tester uh is it clear pepsi <laughs> <laughs> he guessed correctly what does he win a lifetime he, supply of clear Pepsi. All the new clear it, Pepsi you need, it's no clear Pepsi. That's he wins one. an origin story highlight. All right. Boom! Origin, secret origins. You're in it now. In the hot seat, Buster. Thesis, All right. take the wheel. Okay. So, what was the first time you realized you... How, how? Yeah, what was the first time you realized you loved rap music? And what was the... F yeah, okay, answer that one. <laughs> That's... It's, Get him. Probably grade two or three, and mixed kids had mixtapes in my neighborhood, and I remember the rap tracks tapes coming out. Uh, grade five, I remember playing one of the rap tracks tape uh, at lunch because we stayed for lunch at our school, and uh, we were just in the lunchroom with like all the other kids who stayed for lunch, and somebody had rap tracks, and I think there was like a Father MC song on it, and we started like. We just loved it and we were just would play that tape all the time um and then i actually we actually wrote our own raps and and recorded a rap in on one of the teachers remember those like square tape players that you could like record into it was like a there was yeah, a big the brown ones the fisher the brown fisher ones. price yeah. guys yeah so we took one of the teachers tape recorders and recorded our own rap about uh it was it was called the pterodactyl rap because we were just kind of looking <laughs> around the room and essentially freestyling which we didn't know what we were doing and making really bad raps and um that yeah so that was i guess that was grade five or grade six and uh but my earliest memories yeah were, were that stuff and then i had like some run dmc stuff i had some fat boys fresh prince ll cool j uh Definitely, uh, this kid on my street got me into Public Enemy, um, which I loved, and then of course discovered everything. That sounds like a friend's brother story. It was like a friend's brother who could get you into Public Enemy. Yeah, yeah, and just like I remember, like 
you know, we're of the same ilk. I'm sure everybody's got the same thing, but all those tapes coming out, like two live crew was huge and, um, and WA, but, uh, the Ninja Turtles soundtrack, everyone knew that rap. And mm -hmm. yeah, of course, you know, fresh Prince, we all loved, um, like my first rap name in grade five and grade six, I was SJ Jazzy Jordan. Uh, was mine because and it was obviously an homage to DJ Jeffy Jeff and the Fresh Prince and Jesse. I heard you talking or somebody was talking recently about that. The I think I can beat Mike Tyson. So that was one of the first tapes I bought with my own money. Was the mm. um, and in DJ Jeff, Jeff? Yeah, no, no, it wasn't even that. It was a ca single oh. of I think I can beat Mike Tyson, and it had the instrumental on the B side. And like I literally bought it with my own money. I think it was like the cheapest thing you could buy at sam's it was like 99 cents <laughs> thing and i was so psyched and i played that song over and over i kept rewinding it and i was like oh because the other song side doesn't have rhymes on it but then i figured out that that was good that you just had <laughs> and again when you're a kid like you, then that began my quest to find anything with instrumentals on it so that i could somehow like practice rapping over the instrumentals and um, and then into junior high, I got the Far Side 12 inch single in Scarborough because um, my, my family was in Scarborough. Uh, all my cousins are there and stuff. And we would go visit and spend tons of time just hanging out with my cousins. And they'd take me to the mall and I'd just dig for like rap records that you couldn't find in, in Halifax. And I'd always look for the, the singles that had instrumentals because my parents had a turntable. and. Uh, Anyways, what that's part, getting wait, really passing long, me by. Like, was that yeah, passing, passing me, by? me by? So I recorded a track um, uh, over that called "Picto Rap" with my homies Alex Kennedy and Ian, Ian the Mac, and we were the Dregs. And there was we were in this group and the, the Dregs, and we were just a bunch of friends who loved rap and made a bunch of crazy, silly rap songs in junior high. And I don't know. I Do remember I, the picto. Where are we going? How far? I am? This is a very long. I'm okay. All right. Well, back yeah. in the you answered like five of the questions, which is good. <laughs> um, which is good. Um, I just wanted to say, uh, where was the, where was the, where's the most professional place? First of all, where's the first place you ever recorded a verse and who gave you the, like your first real beat that appeared on an album? You know, the first actual studio I was in was in junior high and I was probably I think it was grade seven and it was our homie Tom T who Jesse knows well Tom T mm -hmm. one of the dregs whose parent was worked um uh was a musician who worked at the blind school and the blind school had like a recording setup where we could go in and get on a microphone and actually record stuff to tape so we went in one lunch hour and with like five or six of us and just recorded these like really <laughs> bad raps over like i don't even think i think they had a drum machine there and maybe tom's <laughs> dad like just played the drum machine and we just rapped or like he let us mess around with it and then somebody's played piano i still have the uh this stuff and it's just it's just crazy and then my first actual beat like original beat was my cousin joe who is an incredible he's my older cousin who lives in scarborough and he was really he's a super super talented musician and he was just very versatile and could play everything keyboards horns guitar he could sing um but he he knew that i loved rap so he made rap beats for me and I would write raps and then record with him on his four track. And that was, uh, again, like junior high. And, uh, and then was that like, I'll never tell. No. So I'll never tell. That was actually a beat Mason beat. So that's, oh, wow. Right? That's I got ahead of you. Though. Yeah. I'll never tell was on the original demos. I think that beat Mason and I first did. So, so, that, so I didn't mean to break again, you out of the timeline. What did you do? No, with no, Joe? no. What kind of songs Cousin did you do Joe, with Joe? We did like an actual version of Picto Rap that didn't use the far <laughs> side. We had a song called On File, which I thought was badass at the time, and I've got to find it. And uh, But it was like the lyrics were just like, you know, what, like 12, <laughs> 13 writing this stuff. So, uh, so basically the same stuff I write now. 
Yeah. And... <laughs> Wait, was yeah, it on I'll... file like like you've got a record? Yeah, it was like they got me on file. <laughs> and like I was like they knew who I was. Like and I think obviously because I'm like a G.I. Joe fan, it was probably because I had like file cards because all the G.I. <laughs> Joe guys came with files that you would clip out on the back of the G.I. Joe. So I knew like, oh, I got Cobra Commander's file, man. I got them right here. <laughs> so that's probably where I got that from. <laughs> on file they got sj on file that's dope like, yeah man that's me like that's my and like you know when you're like 13 it's like yeah my record is just like my face and it's like a stamp <laughs> over my head and it says on file like, yeah it's from when dude, i was grounded yeah. oh you're that on file guy <laughs> i heard they got you on file yeah that's right on file. <laughs> i love it dude wow i have not thought of that in a long this is fun. dope, man. Dope. Okay, hey. Now you got uh, uh, two. Yeah, we got it on file, homie. This is what we're trying to do. These <laughs> these are the secret origins. This is what this show's about, man. That the, the stuff that the mainstream is not talking about. You know what I'm saying? That's right. I like uh, it. I like it. So, okay, so first show, first proper show ever, and also favorite show ever that you played. First time performing rap in front of people. Yeah, yeah. There was like a junior high like cafe night and like whatever. I don't know what the, it was like some fundraiser thing. So I performed there in grade nine. And then I think I was in grade 11. I got to perform at Cafe Olay in Halifax, which was pretty legendary. And there's video footage of that show somewhere. So with no. the dregs, we performed at Cafe Olay, which was where I went to my first local rap show a few years earlier, which was one of Joe Run's Halltown Meltdowns. So it was an all ages club. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so wait, so what, were the dregs playing one of the Joe Run shows or was anybody else <laughs> playing that? <laughs> no, we were not that good. I mean, at that point, I think, you know, those guys kind of knew me as this kid who was hanging around and loved rap. Um, and you know, they looked still up know to me. Joe Run. Yeah, like Joe Run and Buck Sixty Five. They were in like Universal Soul. Like those guys were like the the idols to me. Um, mm -hmm. And I used to see them around like my neighborhood and all the time. And um, no, that was like I think it was just a mix. I don't know what the night was. Shout out my homie Peter, who was in a rock band called Shimera. And Jesse, I think you have some crossover, oh, right? I With remember Shamara. Nick, yeah. remember Shamara? I do remember and... Shamara. Wasn't Tim their drummer? Yeah, Tim was the drummer. Tim Malley, shout out Tim Malley. So they used to play a lot of rock nights, and they invited. I think that's how I got on the show, and I performed with the Dregs. Um, so shout out all the all the Dregs and uh, Tom T and and my man Connor and. Alex, the Alex, the robot. Yeah. The whole Alex squad. is is DJing right now. Alex is doing a twelve hour DJ marathon on Twitch. I know we're right. missing it. Go watch Arlex, the robot. So you can you can yeah. you could take a few seconds out of it to watch this and then go watch yeah. Alex. Watch this and then go watch. So sorry, I, I'm missing it. I also saw Tom <laughs> T uh, pop up in the in the, the chat. He's not in the Twitch chat, but I saw him in the Facebook chat before my computer. Uh, before Joel kicked my computer over. So shout okay, out to Tom as well. Shout out Tom T. And I always say this, Tom T was like the best rapper that I grew up with who never like pursued actual rapping. And, mm -hmm. But he was always like of our crew of the drags. It was always like, I always thought Tom was the best rapper. And uh, he's, he's a you know close, close friend to this day. And I always try and get him to write a rap. And, uh, and Ill Jill, shout out Jill. Of course. Yeah. Your cousin Jill. Yeah. Because we're just... It's a fun, just thinking about cool people kind of night. <laughs> yeah, and, and the next question, be, best show ever. Best show you, like your most oh. memorable, is it on tour? Is it, you know, opening up for a dope thing? Or is it like $5 rap nights in general? Yeah, I mean, out. all those Open $5 rap out. shows were, are just amazing to me. Um, we had so much fun with all of those. And they will be back I once the world feels better i best show ever it's so hard to say i mean you know i have really good memories of touring with you with you guys um i right. think there was one show we did 
James, I don't know that you were at, it was at the Seahorse. Jesse, do you remember that one? It was like the back burn. I feel like that was a great, for whatever reason, like everything just was like firing on all cylinders. We all hit the stage at the right time. The crowd was like, Seahorse was at capacity and they were really like surprised. I remember like the door <laughs> girl was like, I, why do you guys have all these people here? Like, this is what is this? Like, this isn't like a classified show. Why is all you? Why do you guys have like a crowd for this rap show? And I was like, no, dis not disn't classified, but she was no, just no, like, no. who are we? Um, you know, obviously class would get would bring a lot of people out. And I remember yeah, no, like it's, it's dissing us. It's not dissing classified. It's dissing, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, Luke's cool. Uh, the yeah, and I just remember that night. It was just kind of like we were defying expectations, and I, I felt like we all just crushed it and it was just a good energy and we had everybody on stage together and we were doing solo sets and um it was just like a beautiful summer night like that's when i think of top shows like that one kind of pops into mm. the front of my brain but was that like 2009 been... that'd be like at the end of the uh the tour we were doing and then yeah we recorded the first album yeah, like I, I just have really great memories of that night. Um, but so many, yeah, I mean, it's impossible. I think like even in the last, like before COVID, I, I was gigging almost, I don't know, like almost every week or every other week for like a few years straight. So there's been like a lot of crazy shows, but that one, yeah, sorry. Long, total long answer. But that Can I hijack a the question a bit now that you're mentioning playing like lots of places? And of course you've, Toward fire and wide in the last few years what are some like really like places you never would have gone to if you weren't touring or like some uh, ex exotics not the right word but you know some places that like you got to from touring that are notable <laughs> um i had great shows in ohio in cleveland yeah? and cincinnati where i never thought they it would be i didn't know what to expect and uh I really, really had an amazing time. Yeah, Cleveland and Cincinnati. And across Canada, there's so many fun, crazy nights. I did a show with Touch in Vancouver, and we were playing at a, an Anzac Club. And I don't know if you know Anzac Club. It's mm. like the Australian New Zealand Association Club or something. And we, okay. we got there, and we're setting up for the show. And this was just sort of a funny moment in time and there were people off to the side gathered around this big screen tv because it happened to be the night of the australian rules football <laughs> championship <laughs> so all these people who were not like our target demo at all were in the show were like piling in and because it was this club they were club members so they had you know it was their spot. We were just kind of visiting. <laughs> but the, the guy who ran the place wanted us to play the show. So we're talking to him. We're like, hey, like, there's this football game happening, like, right next. And it was a floor. We were performing <laughs> on the floor. It wasn't a, a mounted yeah. stage. It was, like, literally right next to the TV screen where all these people are, like, sitting down, buying pictures, wearing their football jerseys. Like, they're pumped to watch this Australian football and Touch and I are like, well, what do we do? And I guess I was like, well, I guess we just do the show. The guy wants us to do the show. <laughs> so we start rapping and half the room are like watching our rap show. And the other half are sitting watching this game and like looking over at us. But then every time they cheered, Touch and I would like, <laughs> cheer and be like yeah this is yeah and then we'd like start <laughs> seeing the guy's name on the screen and we're like yeah roberts yeah go so <laughs> he's smiling about the football and of course i don't i know cfl rules i know nfl i don't know australian rules football footy and, yeah anyways it was uh that was a funny it turned out to be a great night but it was a a very uh unexpected event how'd you get booked at that oh, venue who was, your, who was your promoter I was, there was a, uh, there's a rapper out there called Rosmo. Shout out Rosmo and Clockwork, uh, their crew doing dope, dope stuff in Vancouver. And I don't know how I even knew him. I think maybe Touch knew him somehow. And he hooked up the show and they had been doing like rap shows there. And someone working at the venue knew me and mm. said, yeah, get, get word burglar here that'd be great so 
I was like, I'm here. Amazing. <laughs> but you at, the got end, at the end, Zach. Yeah. yeah, so. You should, yeah. man, maybe you could, like, get a whole Anzac tour across the country. They must have multiple Anzac. Like the Legion for people from the Southern Hemisphere. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. But, uh, anyways. That's... Right. One We're more, all... one more. Oh, sorry. One more question here uh, in the Secret Origins uh realm here it's a story that i know about and if you're willing to talk about it uh yeah here we go it's a big one can you tell us about or deny (laughs) (laughs) exactly exactly if you if if you feel comfortable about this one Uh, (laughs) um what uh i remember a tale about um you playing a gi joe convention and how it was a little bit of a weird show at first but and out to be is that too oh, weird yeah. is that too weird of a thing no to... no no i remember the story no, i like okay okay because i like this story but oh yeah so i was at a gi joe con- so i was at a gi joe con- <laughs> <laughs> exactly because i have an album that references a lot of gi joe things and uh you know surprise i like gi joe and i'm trying to get this story as quick as possible so there was a guy there that i met and he's an awesome dude shout out josh you're the best and he i wasn't doing a show i didn't have i wasn't planning to do a show i was hanging out the convention and this was in we were in colorado and i had played a show in denver the night before and then i went to this gi joe convention the next day which was in loveland colorado and so I was like, good, I do the show in Denver. The next day we drive, I go to Loveland, Colorado. I go to the G.I. Joe convention. Great weekend. This dude is like, you got to do a show here, man. You got to do a show at the G.I. Joe convention. There's a bowling alley next door. I bet you could go do the show there. <laughs> like, what? I'm like, I, man, I don't know. I'm just kind of here. I'm like, kind of hung over. I'm like, yeah, well, okay, maybe. So he, he runs over to the bowling alley talks to somebody there they're like yeah we actually have musicians playing tonight bring him over tonight and he can do the show so this guy comes back again i had like just met this guy (laughs) friend of some other friends i knew and he he was like all right I, i booked you a show at the bowling alley tonight he goes to like the business office because this G.I. Joe convention was happening at, you know, a hotel or whatever. And they have these like, you know, like the business center or something. He goes there and makes all these like photocopy flyers, comes oh, back shit. onto like the convention floor. And he's handing out all these photocopies with like my face on it. I think he <laughs> spelled the name wrong. I think it was like word bugler tonight uh, at the bowling <laughs> alley next door, like literally. And he's giving out these flyers to everybody. And it was a free show. <laughs> so, I'm like, well, I guess I'm doing a show at the bowling alley tonight. Oh, shit. So the day goes on. And this is, look, I'm flattered that someone would, would go to this you know, go to the ends to do this for me. It was, it was amazing, but I was still a little like, well, how's this going to work? Okay, I guess I'll play off the laptop. Da, 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 da. We get to the venue. There's two guys playing. They're Carl and Steve. I'll never forget them. And Carl and Steve can be described as like Ben and Jerry, but surly. And they're playing like old rock and folk jams for families like families, like young kids and their parents eating nachos on the patio in between bowling sets, okay? Amazing. And we show up there, and I'm talking to the manager, and the manager had changed hands. He's like, I don't know, whatever this guy booked this afternoon, but okay, yeah, you, the musicians are out on the patio, just talk to them. So I go up there and talk to the musician. I'm like, oh, hey, I guess I'm playing a show here tonight. And they're like, no, we're, we're playing the show. And this was like their bread and butter. They brought all the gear. They brought the speakers. It was their sound system, and they played for tips. And then I was like, okay, well, what time are you guys done? They're like, well, we're done at 8 o'clock. I'm like, okay, great. Well, then I'll go on after you. And they're like, no, no, we pack up. We we're, we're, we take everything at 8. Oh, fuck. So I'm like, what is going on? So then, meanwhile, everyone who was at the G.I. Joe convention across the street has come over to the bowling alley. So there's, like, a lot of people there. <laughs> <laughs> Except for me to rap about G.I. Joe. And I got Carl and Steve telling me they can't they can't let me on. So 
I convinced them to give me to let me play two songs. Right. And I, look, I, as soon as you guys are done at eight, let me just plug in my laptop and I'll hop on your mic and let me do two songs and then I'm out. You guys got to go home. All good. And they were, they were like, okay, but they did not want to do it. Like they were so <laughs> angry at me. And they were also when I'm like, I'm rapping. They're like, what? Where you're you're from Canada? You're rapping at the bowling alley? <laughs> and then you know, I, like, all these like. G.I. Joe fans are piling in. Uh, and they're like, what is going on here? So I get on the mic. I do a song. And then I start freestyling about Carl and Steve. And I shout them out. And I tell everybody there to start tipping Carl and Steve. Next thing you know, people are like throwing like bills into Carl and Steve's beer jug. Which had like oh, maybe shit. like 10 bucks in it before I got on. They're like, and I'm looking, I'm like damn these guys are getting paid so then i look at them i'm like hey did that just buy me another song and they're like oh yeah yeah totally so then i was just like <laughs> carl and steve, buddy so anyways carl and steve wound up letting me do like a 45 minute set they were like obviously like people are like throwing money at them we're shouting them out we're best friends at the end of the night i'm like freestyling about them and rapping about gi joe for these people and uh yeah then we became like best friends and they're like why don't you come back tomorrow night <laughs> <laughs> but uh it was uh yeah that was that was definitely that's probably yeah that's one of the most memorable shows too so good good memory thesis yeah oh, so God, that i remember was, that yeah. one that was shout out to carl and steve man carl and steve i wonder if they're still there at the bowling alley in loveland Hopefully, colorado when all this is yeah. over you can like link up with them go on tour you know yeah. cross the rockies I would go back. Colorado's great. Nope, Love Colorado. Yo, Loveland, yeah, Colorado's Lo dope. Loveland is where Lizard Grove is from. That's where That's she lives. Dope. Yo, for Danger yes. Grove. <laughs> Liz, all right. Go. I got to find out what that bowling alley is. It's a big one. <laughs> and it's next to the convention hotel where they have the, the, the nerdy cons. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was just a really, that was a fantastic night. So, but you just, you know, when life gives you Carl and Steve, you, you got to shout them out. Make, you oh. make Carl and Steve rich is what you do. Oh yeah, they they caked. They they made some dough that night for sure. I think coming out of Secret Origins, uh, thesis is yeah. this a good time to play your yeah. little video? Okay, yeah, uh, Bergy, watch this. Ooh, all right. <laughs> Shout out Frank Deluxe, who uh, <laughs> observes that that video is just like what he said, the No Self album. <laughs> that could that could refer to any number of No Self albums, and it'd be true in a different way in each of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. Shout out my old exactly. roommate. I have not seen it some time. Oh, shit. Yo, on Gripsky's show on the weekend, there was a big free No Self sign on his wall. Wow. That's, 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 that's yeah, that takes me back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Word up. So, no, man. Thesis, what do you want to tell us about that operation? That we... All right. So, hey, um, you know, this could be uh, partly a space fights uh, thing, but I, was, I guess it's timely. It's more timely, right? But um, so that synthesizer is a remake of the original. It's called the ARP 2600 20, is, is the original. This one's like this other company. I uh, made these other versions of the, they just called it the 2600 and I finally got it. I waited forever. Um, side note, I played that synthesizer on the Spinch album in this museum in the synthesizer. When I was at the Banff Center, they brought the synthesizer museum of Calgary there and they, we, I got to play it. 
um, the things like worth as much as like a house, you know, and then I played it also at this other synthesizer museum in Australia and that's on some new shit that's not even out yet. So when I heard that this one company was releasing these like things, just a limited number of them, I had to snatch one up. So I got my hands on one real stoked because I thought I'd never be able to own it. Like people don't get to own this. Um, even like Korg made a remake and it was like six grand, which is still above my pay whatever. Grade. I don't, yeah. Pay grade. Sure. Sure. Exactly. Um, so I love this synthesizer, and it's also the synthesizer that they use to make the original R2-D2 sound. So for me, I'm just like, Don Spinch, I love it. Uh, every time I touch it, something weird happens. So I found immediately, as soon as you get the thing, like the first thing you got to do is try the R2-D2 patch, right? Um, and the way these synthesizers work, there's a bunch of different ways to do them, but uh, the method to do this is you have to like override some of the planned... Uh, you know, route of how the audio comes out and rewire it. But uh, Berge, I don't know if you've heard this story before, but when you're told on like the making of Star Wars, there's some other ones where they talk about this synth and um, they talk about one of the guys wasn't, it was like someone who was involved in, in sound design, but he wasn't like the main guy, but some, one of the, one of the people there, one of the producers or something, they said they matched his voice while playing the ARP. And I was always like, wow, so that's interesting. And Jesse and I have actually had discussions off camera about this. And they talked about how they did this and put it on tapes. We were wondering how much of it was like tape manipulation after, how much was him singing on top after. So as soon as I get the ARP, I start looking into it. And I find out that you actually have to uh, speak into a microphone. So it's actually the, your voice is being is modulating and sending the commands to the synth to make the noise. But Jesse, you'd asked me before, like, what kind of noises do you need to make your mouth, right? The interesting thing is it's what I liked about it and what I found really really cool was that it's not so much about what you say into uh, the microphone. It's how you, like, rattle the actual – because I was using a headphone, right? But it reminds me that when we're speaking into a mic, we're, it's still like an analog thing. It's still like like metal bits and things that are capturing your voice, which still blows my mind. Um, cause actually like rattling the headphones would make those R2D2 noises too, as I found out later after humming into it for about an hour and nearly passing out cause I wasn't able to breathe, you know, like it's like blowing up balloons. You just get all like, you lose your air. So I, I just really loved it. Um, and, uh, yeah, I don't know if you guys have ever heard about that before. No, yeah. but you're a genius. That is awesome. <laughs> R2D2 how to. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but just it just freaks me out like how how we think about like microphones it's it's just a bunch of metal like springs and stuff and capturing your voice. It's very strange. It's amazing. One time I read about how you know how I guess the most common place that I would encounter the terms be like the radio, like frequency modulation versus amplitude modulation, like the two bands on the radio. Like, they're just, the words don't mean anything to me, or they didn't growing up, except, like, one was a little better, and it was in stereo, and they both, like, you know, one had cooler music. But, like, um, when I was reading a few weeks ago about how amplitude modulation and frequency modulation work, it blew my friggin' mind so hard. It's impossible to imagine that somebody came up with this. It's like especially with TV signals like that are encoded into radio waves because different types of like different different aspects of the wave vibrate at different rates and that some of that is some of that is the audio frequency and some of that is the video like I can't even like I read so much about it and I can't begin to articulate it because how could that yeah. possibly be how things work yeah yeah I mean and then and then like <laughs> yeah microwaves you know what i mean yeah. i'm like don't even get me started what and then we got string theory you know what i mean i'm like what <laughs> i think it's there's like... an insane clown posse song about this a similar topic yeah <laughs> microwaves how do they work Isn't that how nobody <laughs> knows <laughs> somebody just plugged one in one day and it was like <laughs> yeah yeah Look with the Lord guy I found how does he work <laughs> yeah <laughs> hey um one thing i wanted to talk about bergy was um 
the vinyl, the new vinyl of the Cobra Island album. Oh, do you have uh, one handy? Right do I, in your bag of holding? I have a lot of dope vinyl next to me that the crew has done lately. Oh, I want to shout out. So that's shout out Uncle Fess and uh, Aquaculture. Dope record, Bleeding Gums. You can get that from Black Buffalo. Timmy, Timbuktu. That's oh, a dope Oh, man. Hell yeah. yeah. Oh, oh. Yo, Nepotism, dope record. Heck yeah. Uh, so much good vinyl for the crew. Like, uh, you know, I still got my Danger Grove, of course. Didn't of course. sell this on Kijiji yet. Soon. So dope. Um, yeah, Buck 65, of course, I have here. Got all my local oh. stuff. Ghetto Socks, Aquaculture, um, Mahomie Tiffany. Yeah, also in the crew. Tiffany's yeah. got some heat on the third back burn. Yeah, this record. That green, Dude, that's green amazing. soup. So, yeah, uh, it's out, and I'm very excited. And I'm so excited that all the homies have released a lot of dope vinyl lately. And Thesis, I was looking. I've got your book. I've got so much great stuff, and I was just looking for it before this started, but I didn't have time. I think, oh yeah, dude, that's cool, man. Yeah, yeah, no, this is good, man. This is really great stuff that everybody, the whole burner crew, has been putting Joel, out. Joel, hand, really cool hand him the thesis book. There we go. <laughs> hey, hey, thanks, Joel. Ah, uh, that's dope. Before that's dope. And look what I've got in here. It's like there's a zine in the back. A zine. A zine magazine. Which one is oh. that? Time bomb. <laughs> I, do you remember that? Gallery. Yeah, yeah good stuff. definitely, dude. Is that the one where the police come? I don't throw out the homie stuff. I've got all kinds of good stuff around. There. Listen to it, dude. It's that's great. dope, man. That's really cool. Yeah, I'm gonna have some another little vinyl piece for you soon. So, woohoo! Yeah, I've I've got vinyl for you for sure coming your way, and yeah, that's cool. welcome to Cobra Island. Everybody who helped me uh, fund this because we did a crowdfunder uh, on Bandcamp and uh, couldn't have done it without without everybody who helped pitch in. And uh, I was able to secure some extra copies. So if people need them, um, hit me up. And it went really it went really well. I was watching it like a yeah. hawk, um, cheering it on. And uh, I remember your uh, your people. They came out in force. It was all Carl, Carl and Steve. <laughs> Carl, <laughs> Carl and Steve, I just messaged them. I'm like, hey, you guys owe me. Call up everyone you know. Get them to pledge to my vinyl funding campaign. And, uh, yeah, no, people came through. I was uh, amazed that it happened. And uh, I would love to do more. So I know a lot of people have asked me to do uh, another record on vinyl, another release on vinyl. So I, I'm hoping with the next album, like the new album I can I can put out on vinyl and then maybe go back and and start pressing some of the older stuff cuz I'm sold out of replicable skills right now so I kind of want to do I'm not going to do another CD pressing of that but vinyl cool yeah Man, I love the last album um what's it called uh, the like every space song Earth? yeah dude, oh, space Verse. amazing it's so dope oh yeah we it's were so talking dope. about space for uh, yeah. you and I all of the yeah all of the universes it travels through. Yeah. And so much time. Yeah. And yeah, James, actually, uh, you were talking to me about um, like properties, you know, like worlds and myths and uh, not just G.I. Joe, but like Transformers and all the, yeah. all the things that make up like the fabric of our, of our mythologized childhoods, you know, how they come into our art. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just seeps into it everywhere. Like, uh, especially like I found my paintings actually are inspired a lot more by that stuff. That, but like sonically, I am by the soundtracks of it uh, and those kind of things. But yeah, it's awesome, man. Um, shout out to uh, for the for the the Doctor Who track, and they use a sample with uh, I think it's Harry from the original one. Oh, it's so good. Um, did Les give you that sample, or did you find did you? Yeah, uh, that was less joint uh, and kills collabo on the on the remix on the record. So, yeah, less kills banded together and uh, 
yeah, I just I kind of had all these different sci-fi tracks bubbling and with that stuff, with those concept albums, I mean, I always think it's like I'm doing it really for me. Like it's the kid in me, you know, seven year old me would love to hear a rap album about all my favorite stuff. That's like good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, but it, I feel it's like it's taken me, you know, my life to get to a level where I'm like, OK, I can attempt to make my seven year old inner uh voice happy and uh <laughs> and make a rap song about the hoojibs exactly well, this is the thing i'm trying to say though is it's like you're saying all these things yeah. but you're handling it you're handling it as oh. like a, a like a dope rapper like the rhymes are awesome and they're fucking hilarious and they're like they're like if you're in the know you're gonna love this way too much you know <laughs> so for me it's like yeah it's like that stuff that's like off the just off the beaten path that like real fans of those things know um right because it's, it's not really a song it's, it's not a song about luke and leia and darth vader it's a song right. about the who jibs yeah yeah, yeah what's the exactly. first where did you first hold on hold on we're gonna put you back into secret origins where did you first hear about the who jibs well i brought this along this was yeah. it the this is legit planet of the who jib oh From shit. When, you had that from when you were a kid this is your this is not the one i had as a kid this is was gifted to me uh a few people have actually found these at like <laughs> flea markets and mailed them to me and um <laughs> you, you know smells like grandma's basement but it's uh dope as hell <laughs> and uh, it's a little yeah, personal <laughs> we we sample this on the uh on the track and uh, oops i gave up a sample that's the only time i will ever do that um <laughs> But yeah, like the, the, the music or scratch like there, man. So this came out um, in between Empire and Jedi, but they were everywhere. And I think like they mass produced them and they were just you could find them at discount like at Lawton's drug stores till like <laughs> 1992 or something. Right. Like they were always yeah. around, but I had it and I used to listen to it all the time because you just I couldn't get enough Star Wars and there was only three out there and then you had the Marvel comics and so then I discovered that the who jibs were in the Marvel comics and that's the only place they've ever existed in the Marvel comics and like the old Marvel comics and uh this book on record and I was just kind of like my whole life like it's one of those things where you're like you, you start going crazy where you're like hey do you remember the who jibs what are you talking about who jibs no, I remember like Jabba the Hutt and Boba Fett and Darth Vader, who the, who the Hoojibs. And so it just became this thing. And I would like always have to tell people, I'm like, nah, man, they're like these telepathic bunnies and like the rebels were like hiding out and had to, they let them stay with them. And then Luke became really good friends with Cliff and blah, 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 blah. Like, nah, what are you crazy? I'm like, no, it's real, man. So as time goes on, the older we get and like these weird little things that you think you might have, you might quarter remember, was that real? You know, I, I feel like driven to preserve them and talk about them and, of course, have fun and make light of this ridiculousness. Right. But it's like <laughs> very seriously. So of that's course. yeah, that's why I like to do it. And like same with visionaries. There's a track about the visionaries on that record and uh, and just it's stuff. And that's, you know, that's what I've always done. And, you know, maybe I'll reference, you know, we all do it and. You reference a rapper you love or like something that some you just real stuff that you just need to preserve and for me being able to preserve this stuff so i can look one day and say i've got this cd on my shelf that you know documents the existence of who <laughs> uh, you know that's all i need to do it for i don't expect it to you know make disney me can't like retcon cool. them out of existence to preserve exactly. your, uh... <laughs> yeah. like I'm, I'm that guy going yeah you know you're forgetting the who jibs um yeah well that's uh, the thing too with, with a lot of toy stuff i find there's like that thing where there's uh like a lot of people point to mandela effect like toys prove it you know it's like was 3po's leg discolored was there did boba fett's backpack fire a rocket or not and you kind of cover a lot of those weird side things in your songs that people like did that really happen or was there a thing or was i just making that up yo <laughs> i watched i watched a little bit of episode four uh, night before last, because I had just watched Rogue One and I wanted to dovetail into it. GPO's leg was disco. Mm -hmm. 
And I, right. I hadn't, I had actually never noticed it before, but it just stood out to me that. But isn't the Mandela effect that like it wasn't, but then it was? I don't even know which one oh, they're saying right. it is or what dimension we're in, right? So, yeah. I mean, it's weird, yeah. and I mean, stuff. I mean, you couldn't look at it as like, oh, well, now it's just like big corporations making money off this stuff. But I think like if these things provided you fun and joy in the past, like it's worth preserving and holding on to those moments and finding those like simple moments of purity and joy that you had that you can just say okay cool you know and that's this is what i liked about it and i just i want this little piece for to to enjoy so uh you know and it's it's all about the balance and you know it's not like you know disney needs my help to to sell star wars <laughs> <laughs> No, but visionaries, visionaries, uh, you're gonna you're gonna bring them back. There's gonna be an IDW uh, visionaries trade paperback. I'm gonna champion that. Yeah, there was a short-lived thing. They tried bringing them back a couple years ago, hey. and uh, yeah, like I think that cartoon was incredible. And I mean, yeah. it's in the it's in the song Spectral Mike. Why I think it's cool, and it's a it's a futuristic society where they were so advanced and it very well could be earth in the far far future they're so advanced so reliant on technology and everything they had it at all latest iphones they had the <laughs> fancy tv the it's wild because it was on in the cards. 80s yeah they got chance computers and then all technology was wiped out and society instantly reverted to the dark ages and magic came back because yeah. of course and I always thought that was a crazy concept and the creators were kind of knocking stuff out of the park. They had the G.I. Joe Transformers, Jam and the Holograms, they had all these hit shows and then they swung with the humanoids for the fences mm. and it got canceled after one season. But again, kids, you don't know what's going on. Then the show just stopped ever airing and there was only like 12 episodes and the animation's crazy, the acting's crazy. Like it's great. It's a great show, like in Humanoids, which you'll, you can hear about on my new record. Uh, which will be out later this year. I have an oh. Inhumanoid. Oh, yeah. You have, but, a, you uh, have a title for that record? I do have a title, but yeah, it's it's okay. Uh, top it, right now. Secret Origin. Song is called that song's called Blame Inhumanoids, and which explains why I am this way because of the Inhumanoids. Yeah, my dad about... was my dad was Sorry, not comfortable know. with me watching. In... Like he would he would come by because uh, it was like it was in like the later block of the Saturday morning cartoons, and it was on a show. Um, it wasn't like a full half hour, was it? Like it was split with a few other. Um... It was on Sunday mornings when other kids were reading gospels. I was trapped <laughs> really? in a hell between Jam and the Popple. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> and, yeah, no. Sunday mornings, yeah, in humanoids. It's crazy. But like, but like it was like a it was like a show that had a few different stories that it would cycle through, and it wasn't always. It was like a variety cartoon show. I yes, think. Yes, right. It started like, on Gal yeah. Was was Galtar one of the other ones, maybe? Maybe. Like, Jem was on it. There was a Bigfoot cartoon, but it was like Bigfoot the truck, not like the... Bigfoot the creature, the mythological right. Right. hero of the woods. <laughs> well, I was going to ask you about it. Robotics was on that little little oh, cluster, robotics too. Remember robotics? Been on that. I don't, yeah. There was a robotics yeah. show? Oh, I do remember yeah. the song. Yeah, robotics. 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 But I just remember yeah. something. The... I don't know what they would do, but... It was, it was like their minor leagues. They were testing out ideas to see what they could yeah. go up, like what next season would get a full show. And then Humanoids wound up getting a full show. Oh, and shit. then it was off the chains, madness, mutilations, acid melting people. Like there's this creature called Decompose who's like rotted bones who rips open his rib cage and like swallows humans. And then they're yeah. trapped in his rib cage and he keeps eating food and their food falls on their heads yeah because they're in his rib cage yeah. and but you can see through because his skin's all ripped off you think i'm making yeah. this up this was a cartoon that we watched anyways yeah hey man Stay we could talk about cartoons talking about reality you know like pretty hardcore we've had that on on your podcast remember we were talking about like the how it was all conspiracy based the whole thing with cobra law and like basically that being like cobra commander like finding his like serpent people that is trying to be the illuminati basically right uh yeah, under, underground really here yeah like his yeah. like yeah lizard reptilian shapeshifter kind of people you know pre-humans ran the earth in you know 
symbionts with the nature and then all of a sudden they come out after the ice age and apes have evolved and this kind of thing and uh but they're slowly trying to take it over but they're terrorists though too like all these twists of like it's kind of like this illuminati story it's kind of like this and like destro being basically like a mason too and all this stuff like that yeah, yeah i think that shit's hilarious how like now that like obviously i just feel like it's like little seeds my conspiracy brain's like, yeah, they were trying to get us to think about that. So now people, that's QAnon. Oh. You know what I mean? It's like, you know. Well, if like you look at the people, yeah, the people who wrote those cartoons were like some of the most avant-garde out there comic book creators of the 70s who then were just needed work. So the big animation studios were like, yeah, we'll hire Steve Gerber. Steve mm -hmm. Gerber comes over, starts working on all those cartoons along with a whole bunch of other Marv Wolfman, like incredible comic book writers writers of that time who were just like they had carte blanche and a budget to write this stuff and they knew how to get past certain you know handcuffs and uh they've been working under oh, the comics code authority for so long that's right that's right so you know yeah on one hand these are just like big corporate uh ips you know but the 80s was just like anything goes and uh end into the 90s and uh yeah anyways and then little wayne ruined everything so Wait, what? Oh no, that was just rap. Oh no, did I say that? <laughs> I like Lil Wayne. I'm a, I'm actually looking forward to your song about popples. <laughs> that's gonna be that's gonna be a, a deep. And remember Wuzzles? Mm. Wuzzles, yes, they were they like combinations of different. Yeah, wrinkles, were... Wuzzles. You know. No. Yeah. Wuzzles Talk to was Darren. like combinations Talk to of different about animals. The wuzzles. Oh, were. <laughs> Boxes yeah, they were all drawn. like mutant, like unholy combos, right? Well, no, they were very holy. They were very cute combos of like a hippo butterfly. But wasn't it... A hippo and a butterfly shouldn't have a baby. <laughs> How is that working? I don't, I don't believe it was... I don't believe it was conceived in an act of passion. Were they grown in a lab? <laughs> it's actually deeper it's darker than in humanoids the uh the prequel that leads to the creation of the wuzzles wow that's what you know if i had you know all the money in the world i'd buy up old ips like that and <laughs> then just make like this is the real origin of the wuzzles <laughs> totally <laughs> yeah 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 wait this hippopotamus butterfly and this bunny raccoon what the hell is going they fucked <laughs> We're so mature, fellas. Dude, that's dope. This um, is great. Shout out everybody who's hanging out with us tonight. This is so We've got fun. a bunch of homies. And I have enjoyed, and I want to shout also Astral Island and uh, Thesis and Jesse. Thank you for providing such great entertainment. Uh, you know, I usually put it on the background when I have more important stuff to do, but I want to give you guys like a view. Um, <laughs> 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 and, and, All right, and oh, just cut the fucking show. Joel, cut the shit. <laughs> Shout out accepted. Uh, I run back in the room when you're like dissing me. I'm like, wait, what? No. Um, <laughs> we just do that to see if you're listening. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, we got. No, we it's got great. A lot of it's a great. You got a great thing going on here, and I uh, just want to see it grow and uh, and blossom into some type of wuzzly beast. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, wait, wait, till you, wait till you see me and Thesis, like, form into one creech. Like, I just get up on his shoulders. We both collapse. That's a wuzzle. That's a wuzzle You'd thing. be Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah. This is, why, to... this is why we keep you on payroll. You're always the, the one in the writer's room who brings it all together. <laughs> ah, dude. A lot of people don't know Word Burglar writes most of our interviews for this show. Like, <laughs> yeah. being modest, but like a lot of this back and forth that you see with us and different uh, guests is completely scripted. I'm reading a teleprompter. I have no idea what half of it means. Yes, he's been yes. ghostwriting this since since episode one. So here you go, y'all. <laughs> yeah. This is the big was, reveal. It, I'll it get was, that next was, script to you by uh, Monday. I promise. It was Word, a homie. weird choice when he replaced Jackie, Jesse Jacobs with Jesse Dangerously, and I almost think it was like an accident, <laughs> like a typo. <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh you know they did that in like uh three's company and uh every other good show you know i'm the i'm the aunt viv of this i'm the <laughs> young, i'm the young aunt viv of this hell the yeah new. hell yeah you're the perky one <laughs> <laughs>
Hell yeah. Well, Bergy, man, thanks so much for coming on, dude. This is dope. Um, I love what you're doing. You know that. We're homies. Your you know hair. what I mean? But your hair, yeah, you, yeah, you should have taken the cap off and shown your, lo your, your, your lovely locks. There we go. Uh, That's what I'm talking lady, about. Lovely locks. That was you're, another you're, great character. You're taking. Yo, you're we gonna... have the exact same hair right now. Except you got the curls, but we got the Yo. exact same length. We probably got our haircut the same day, January 2020. Never again. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, man, you keep that kind of shit up by October. By next Halloween, you'll be able to go to Timbuktu. That's the plan. <laughs> yeah, I'm going as Timmy for Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> Timbuk three. <laughs> <laughs> No, but that's dope. Hey, thanks so much, everybody, in the comments, too. Like, we had Han Solo Records, Burger Finger, Choke. I mean, same, like, it's amazing. Fuck. We had Frank Deluxe shout up out. in here. Special yes. shout-out to my homie Longhair. Um, All the homies. Yeah, man. We got Nufisaurus. We got uh, Mike was up in here. Burger Finger. E e Epic was up in here. That's dope. Um, yeah. Rick Rove. And we got all the homies in here. Frosty's in here. Um... Uh, yeah. Hey, uh, that was a dope show last night. That um, that uh, the Saskatoon but home, homies put homeless on. house. Uh, uh, it was with like um, homeless house. Uh, homeless house. Yeah, that was real dope. Um, Riddler, uh, and uh, Fish and um, uh, uh, Brzezowski. It was dope. People are doing great things online. We really appreciate it. I love being entertained by y'all. Thanks for hanging out with our stuff. Riddler is um, on a word burglar song. Oh yeah, word, word, word. Yeah, word. he's on Third Burglar. So is MC oh. Homeless. Oh yeah, right, so right. Shout out word. Homeless and uh, and Riddler. Yeah, and a chokes great on bunch that. Of dudes. Great and Timmy, chokes yeah. up in there. On an apt beat. By apt. Oh. By apt. Yo, yo. Speaking of apt, I've been talking to him recently. Cause one week from today is the tenth anniversary of Humble and Brilliant. Mm -hmm. And he's doing a little remaster that uh, I'm gonna try and drop on people. Like, just want it to sound as nice as possible. You learned a lot in the last ten. I'm still waiting for that Rap Hundreds collection, Jesse D. No, I'm still right. trying to finish trying to finish more raps. You, I think you pick. I, I think you should put it out to the people to pick, like ten of the rap hundred songs and put it out on do a vinyl exclusive release. Cause I think they're all good and you got a lot of great stuff there. And I just want to hold you in music form. I wish you weren't such a good disc. artist so that you could be all of our manager. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That'd be dope. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't you yeah. get a little I, worse at rapping so that we can pick your brain more often? I'm always here for you and I don't know much. I don't know much, but the stuff I know, I love to rap about. So there you go. Dope, dude. Oh, dope. oh. Yeah. Brian, a little fell off the door. Well, Thesis, you were making sort of wrap-up sounds. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, shout out to Mansta for, for hopping in. Um, also, oh, just up? wanted to give you... What's up? Oh, just yeah. agreeing with you. I was doing like right. the wrap-it-up signal. Nice, That's what they nice. Do. Yeah, let's yeah. get out of here. That's what okay. managers do. They're like, yeah. all right, let's go. Okay, yeah, exactly. Yeah. See, uh, shout out to Mean Joe Tunes. Check his show out this Friday um, on International Island. We also have Mondays with Uncle Fester. And uh, every one, uh, it's like the first, no, it's like it's the last, I don't know, the first uh, Sunday of every month, we got last. gripped on with last whatever. Uh, we'll announce it it's on the Sunday. On uh, one Sunday a month, you get the hot cake show. Um, we got a couple other really cool things cooking up on astral island thank you so much everybody for checking out we love you guys you guys are dope thanks for saying funny shit and making our night fun and cool burglar you're amazing thank you for being our first secret origins uh my pleasure participant and uh i got dope. new podcast episodes dropping soon weekend at Burgies. we're coming back in full effect kind of had a year of a lot of stuff going on and i've uh, been very 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 busy behind the scenes but haven't been releasing a lot of stuff so um you know i became a dad and uh there's this whole thing going on in the world so it's been a it's been a wild year but uh i have a lot of things i've worked on that i have not been able to talk about yet that are coming up so uh just so people keep gotta follow just go follow just hit follow on wherever you listen to podcasts on your Spotify, your iTunes, go find Weekend at Burgies, go find Do You Still Like This Movie, follow it, follow it, follow it, follow it, and then you'll get it when it happens. 
like follow subscribe hit it hit it, hit that no Hell yeah i've just i just came on here to hang out with you guys but uh <laughs> but also <laughs> but so also please. fucking send word word yeah exactly man yeah Hell yeah, yeah